Hello Seagulls fans and welcome to the grand final edition of our team selection video. After 20 long rounds and three weeks of finals, it all comes down to Williamstown and Box Hill, 3pm on Sunday at Etihad Stadium for Premiership Glory. And joining me as always to take us through all the grand final action is football manager Chris Dixon. Chris, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, must be a very, very exciting time to be a Seagull. It's good to be here. It's good to be here. It's rather um, planning for a busy week rather than um, getting ready for 2016. So obviously it was a great win for the boys on the weekend. And yeah, of just the way everything sort of come together. Um, yeah, we're in with a shot obviously. So wrapped to be here and looking forward to, um, yeah, to Sunday and everything leading up to it. So just touching on that win against Essendon last week, it was a thrilling battle. Uh, the game ebbed and flowed. Both teams put string, uh, yeah, consecutive goals together on the board. You must be uh, especially proud of the players, though, the way they weathered the challenge that Essendon threw at them and to, to overpower them in the last quarter and book themselves a place in the, this Sunday's game. Yeah, there were a lot of different emotions, I guess, after the game. Obviously, the, probably the initial excitement and, I guess, a fair bit of relief. Um, Look, we didn't play our best footy um, for parts of the game, as you mentioned. Like, we obviously had a couple of really good periods, but certainly felt that we were a bit below par, um, which was probably due to the occasion. And we obviously knew there was a sort of big crowd out there that were pretty much cheering Essendon on. So, um, certainly think there was a lot of good lessons to come out of it. Um, but for the way the boys to really respond in that last quarter, um, off the back of some real key players and, and key people in our football club, guys who have been around the club for a long time, it's, um, yeah, it makes you really proud of the boys' effort and the way they sort of will, will themselves to victory um, when everything was on the line was a great, great response. And to get the win and get it through to a grand final was a great reward for everyone. Um, but I guess our focus quickly turned to um, what's going to be a huge match this week. So, yeah, was, the rooms was a great scene after the game, but the boys were straight out of there, straight down to Port Melbourne Beach. And I guess once they hit the water, um, it was all about this week. So our grand final opponents, Box Hill, obviously uh, just won through in their game too against Sandringham. Now, a lot's been made around their team selection this week and the, you know, the different possibilities given their Hawthorne alignment. I'm wondering if you could just sort of talk us through that and, and what it means for their team selection. Yeah, and look, we are aware of the situation. Um, we're planning for their best case scenario. So, um, look, from our point of view, structurally, we don't think they're going to change too much, um, depending on the result of the AFL game. We're planning for whatever they throw at us in terms of um, their best case um, lineup, and I guess one of the things that we do know, and we've seen it obviously being in alignment as well, is that um, there's probably going to be a few Box Hill players that, are, that want Fremantle to win, so they get an opportunity to play grand final footy. So, um, look, the, whichever way it is, there's going to be some really hungry players coming in. So we're well aware of the different um, machinations of who plays and who doesn't, but our focus is really on how we want to play, and we just sort of know that no matter who comes in for Box Hill, they're going to be playing a similar game style, and they're going to be filling their role as they normally do. Probably one of the things, I guess, having played their development team three times in the last three weeks, we've got a pretty clear understanding of who's sort of next in line and probably have been looking at a bit, looking at that a bit closely over the last few weeks. So probably feel we're pretty prepared for whichever way it goes. Um, but we know one way or another, um, the players that are out there for Box Hill are going to be doing everything they can to win the game for them. So it's, um, we'll, we'll sit back and watch Friday night's game with interest, but it doesn't really change too much from our point of view. Now, for ourselves, obviously going to be one confirmed change with uh, the unfortunate injury to Ben Bess, who you know, put his body on the line, and uh, I'm sure all the players are <laughs> appreciative of the efforts he made. But, yeah, a hard luck story for Ben to be missing out this week. Yeah, it was a, it was a gutsy act, and it was a pretty critical time in the game. Um, obviously, the scores were pretty close and probably saved us a goal in the end. It's, um, yeah, it's your heart breaks for him. It's... Um, and he's probably, I guess as a player, he's probably flown a bit under the radar in terms of our football club um, externally. Um, but sort of internally, he's held in such high esteem. He does that sort of stuff week in, week out. And it's probably something that's not seen as much um, externally. But um, the boys love him. The boys love what he does in terms of his hardness and com his competitiveness. And there was one act to, I guess, typify him. I think everyone saw it on the weekend. And unfortunately, um, he puts his body on the line and he misses this week. So he's gone in for surgery, which all went well. Um, he actually had four breaks in his collarbone. So, as you can imagine, he's done a really good job of it. So, um, but it's just, if it gives us that extra bit of motivation to know that we can win it for him, I'm sure it's only going to help the team. So how do you go about replacing him, I guess? There's obviously a few players in line for that. But, uh, yeah, how do you go about replacing his position in the side? 
We've got a few options, which is good. Um, as we've said a sort of few times throughout the year, we've had a really good run with injuries. Um, so we do have a lot of guys sort of in the wings. Um, we saw both Brad Mangan and Nick Singh play in our development team. Um, and then we also saw on the weekend um, Sam Critchley, Lee Masters and Cam Lockwood all spent times at both ends of the ground. So we've got the ability for sort of those three guys to play at either end, which is good. Um, and we've also got the ability to sort of bring um, someone like a Brad Mangan or a Nick Singh in. So we feel like we've got options. Um, I guess it's just about finalising which way we go with it in the end. So certainly feel that we can um, cover his loss, but we'll need, whoever comes in will need to play with the same sort of intensity and the same selfless and courageous act that sort of Ben had on the weekend. It's been a real team effort so, uh, to this point in the year. We've had, I think, 44 players play senior football off the list, which is an amazing achievement and you know uh, it shows just how much depth the club has uh, how do you go about narrowing down that 44 i guess to the to the 23 that run out there on sunday oh, it's tough it's tough and as you said 44 guys have represented us at the senior level and a lot of them have been um putting great performances so yeah unfortunately you can't get them all in um there's going to be a lot of guys who are in really good form and development level who are going to miss out on a game and yeah, as you said, every year, we, I think with the grand final team, there's going to be some hard luck stories. So we, we need to pick the team that we think is going to win on the day against the, against the opponent. So that's how we've gone about it. Um, we'll finalise that, obviously, between now and Sunday. But um, there'll be some pretty guys, guys who'll be pretty unlucky to miss out, but they know that they've played a huge part in getting us to this point. Um, and they're going to be a huge part of the day as well. So. It's up to us to, I guess, pick the team that we think is going to win on the day. Um, and look, we're pretty confident that we'll come up with the right formula and hopefully get the job done. Now, post-match, uh, win or lose, obviously we're hoping for a win, but win or lose uh, at Burbank Oval from 7pm. There'll be a get-together. We invite all supporters along to come and celebrate what a great year it has been for the football club. And as we say, we hope it's a win and the Premiership Cup's there in attendance. But, yeah, we'd love to have as many people along 7pm uh, uh, onwards on Sunday night to, to help us celebrate that. Uh, if we are successful in winning our 16th Premiership on Sunday, we are holding a family day at Burbank Oval on Monday. Uh, that'll be from 12pm to 2pm, so players will be in attendance. We'll have our mascot Specky there, the Premiership Cup, so photo opportunities. With all that, uh, barbecue, so it's school holidays, so we do encourage to bring along the kids, bring your footies, have a great day out and um, meet some of what hopefully are our premiership heroes. Uh, we'll also be selling merchandise at the game. Chris, uh, I suppose it's just a, a call to arms now to get as many supporters there as possible. We were pretty outnumbered against Essendon, which I suppose is to be expected given the AFL contingent they have, mm. but we're really calling upon the whole of Hobson's Bay, I suppose, to get around us and um, support us out there on Sunday. Yeah, I guess if you've never, um, if you've never seen a game of Williamstown footy before, there's no better time to jump on, but as you said, um, and look, it did have a bit of effect on our players and I think we'll handle it a bit better on the weekend, but certainly we were outnumbered there against Essendon, um, but I guess this week we're encouraging everyone if you don't want to go for Box Hill and you don't want to go for Hawthorne, then we'd love to have you on board. So I think it's a great story. It's Dan Lone Club coming through, a bit of an underdog battle the whole way through, coming up against a big AFL club. So we're encouraging everyone to get down there, show your colours, blue and gold, cheer, cheer the boys on nice and loud. Um, they really appreciate the sport. And if it gives us that extra 1% on the day, it's going to go a long way to hopefully achieving what we're setting out there to achieve. So if you're not doing anything, there's no footy on in Melbourne. Um, the roof's going to be closed. There'll be no rain, no wind. So there's really no excuses not to get down there and cheer us on. So last game of the year, let's hopefully it's our best game of the year and it's packed with blue and gold. Well, that's it. This is obviously our last team selection video for the year. So thanks very much for tuning in across the year. Uh, Chris, any final words on this season and obviously leading into Sunday's game? Oh, look, I think it's been a, um, been a decent journey for our guys and we're hoping just to cap it off this week. So. The boys are in a really good spot. Um, I'm sure they're going to do all our supporters and our members really proud. So once again, come along, show them your support, show them the, the love that we've been receiving from you guys throughout the year. And hopefully come about 6 o'clock Sunday, 3 p.m., we might have a bit of success. So get down there and cheer the boys on. That's it. So Sunday, Eddie Had Stadium, 3 p.m., Williamstown versus Box Hill. Make sure you get there, cheer us on and go Seagulls.